guys, welcome back. We are live once again for a brand new episode of Channel Chasers. Of course, as always, I am your host, Jay from Mr. Jay's Reviews, and joining me as always is my friend, my co-host, my self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How you doing tonight, Brian? <sighs> Hello, people. Woof I... is right, Brian. Woof is right. I... I'm not completely okay, but let's talk about that. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so um, if you can't tell already by the title and or thumbnail on uh, whatever platform you're listening uh, to this on, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or the YouTube channel, J&B's Broadcast Omniverse, uh, thank you to everybody who's watching and or listening. Uh, Thank you. our audience has expanded a bit. Uh, we've gotten even more international. Uh, we have some people listening in Dublin, Ireland, like specifically Dublin, according to my analytics. And they've nice. been they've been watching. Uh, from my, from what I can tell, they've like seen multiple episodes in a row. So, thank you, whoever's listening in Dublin. Um, yes, I would try to do an accent, but that would be. Yeah, I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, uh, we're not gonna touch that. Uh, but yeah, we are talking about Thirteen Reasons Why, season four, the final season of uh, this just honestly iconic Netflix show. Um, I'll definitely say that. And roller coaster, yep. too. for sure. Um, so we have done previous episodes on the first two seasons in the original version of channel chasers that i did on my original youtube channel but uh if you've been here long enough you you know the song and dance those no longer exist unfortunately Um, yeah but also maybe a little bit fortunately because uh, in this case because our 13 reasons why season one was like four hours yeah four hours and some change Mm mm-hmm (sighs) <sighs> and, and then and then season two was almost three, I yes. think. Something like that. Uh, yeah, this one is a notoriously long topic because, you know, obviously with 13 Reasons, it's uh, some pretty heavy shit. Yes, pretty and uh, this, shit. this doesn't go into any spoilers, but there are tapes involved in season one, and uh, we were, like, going over each tape. Yeah, we, yeah, we legit went tape by tape and went into detail for every tape for the first season, if you haven't seen the first season yet. Um, and I had read the book, so I had some, like, you know, obviously book takes as well. Um, but but also, we didn't go into that planning it. We just thought we'd do, like, a normal 90-minute podcast, and then we started looking at the time, and we were like, holy crap, we've really been going on for four hours. Yeah, dude. It, yeah, it was some heavy shit. So, um, this one was this one was really interesting because you know, um, Br- uh, Brian and I we usually watch at different paces because you know I have a lot more free time since you know I I work online in general. Mm-hmm. So like I, I usually can watch things, um, you know, pretty easily. Um, but with uh Blair being back and uh, me experimenting with Twitch and doing streams and stuff. I I haven't had time to I, I didn't have to really like go into full binge mode and also this show is pretty heavy so like I wanted to watch it in chunks so actually for a good while me and Brian were on the same pace I pulled ahead of him like towards the end uh, but like for a while we were actually like on the same pace it was like it was like because we we chat with each other while we watch. Like, not spoiling it for each other when we're ahead, but Mm -hmm. uh, we do chat to, like, Vin, and it's like, what the hell? How did that happen? And then 20 minutes later, I'm like, what the hell? How did that happen? Exactly. Usually, it's just me like, right? 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 (laughs) Like, yeah, no, that's how this whole experience was. And um... But, But I can tell you that this doesn't spoil anything, but the last episode was so much that we barely talked to each other. Oh, yeah, dude, dude, okay, but, like, this doesn't spoil anything, but I will tell you, I'll be completely honest here, like, that last episode made me, a particular moment in there, like, I I held strong for a while, but there was one moment in there, as soon as it happened, I started crying. Oh, I 
cried hard once, <laughs> soft once, and teared up once. Nah, man, I cried. I cried hard at this this one particular moment at the end, and I was just like, "Oh God." Yeah. Now, now my now, now my Chick Fil A fries taste extra salty. It was like I I wasn't even looking at the screen. <laughs> Bro, uh, it was it was rough. Um, but before we get into that, since we didn't actually get to do an episode on season three, let's kind of just quickly address the garbage fire that was season three. Um, yeah, because um, season three, I will just say that uh, that I was trying to go through three and four fast to catch up because um, I had not heard good things about three. Yep, and I, and I I I've said pretty bad things about it. <laughs> and uh, we actually had planned to do a video podcast about it back when we still did video podcasts, and uh, something else came up, and Jay's like, it wasn't that good anyway. Yeah, I, I honestly hated it. Um, and like, so this let's just kind of go into overall thoughts of the previous seasons, just kind of a lightning round thing. So the first season is still by far the best. Mm-hmm. It's like it's iconic. It's seriously it opened up a necessary conversation. Uh, definitely was super relatable. Some tough topics. Um, I, I do appreciate that they that they fixed it after the fact and they got rid of that really you know super heavy graphic scene of you know Hannah performing the act. Is all I'll say. Um, but but it, it was. But, an experience I, yeah. to watch. Oh yeah, if, if you if you watched it while that scene was still in there on Netflix, oh boy, that was. Yeah, that I was, saw it. That I, and I know. I'm, I'm just I'm just telling the people that may not I have. Know. Like, man, that was. Ooh, talk about heavy, but wow, it uh, was, and I get why they did it, and I, I respect the decision. I definitely respect. I the do decision. feel it is. It is necessary, but I can also see how someone who is going through a similar time yeah. might be. But and I so I also want to just quickly kind of talk about. I really don't believe the argument that there are two reasons why glorifies suicide no. or glamorizes it. It makes everything. It makes if you going back to the time where that scene was included. If you go back to it, there is nothing glamorous or like. There's nothing glamorous about oh, it. It's oh, dark. It's heavy. They it's don't play sad. any music. Yep. They and don't. All, even when you... Hannah herself is is narrating, mm-hmm. she doesn't glorify it in any way. Yep. It is just purely her voice, and it's just like wow. Oh my god. Uh. But yeah, no, and I, so I think kind of my, pro- and two, I think was also solid. It closed the book on the Hannah Baker portion of the story, which I appreciated. I don't think it was as good as the first season, but it was still good. Yes, it, they tried to do like, tried to keep up the whole tapes thing going, mm-hmm. but like Polaroids instead. And, I, um, and the courtroom drama stuff was kind of interesting, but it got tiresome after a while. Um, yeah, and and in the end, did like it. It was good, in my opinion, but it was not as good. Oh, yeah, uh, but I, I still think it's one of the better ones. And then let's talk about three. Okay, so here's my biggest problem with three, and this kind of also spills into four. Um does it spoil well, anything? No, it doesn't spoil anything. Don't worry. I, I'm just talking about like a major theme. So, All right. just making sure. Don't worry. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warn the people when we get into spoilers. But um, yeah. So my biggest problem with three that definitely spills a little bit into four is that the major theme of both of those seasons is forgiveness. And look, you know, um, not to get like too deeply religious here. Um, I was raised Catholic. Um, I, I definitely believe in the ideals of forgiveness, but sometimes that shit just—it's it's too hard to apply. And some mm-hmm. people, and some people, like—I'm not saying they don't deserve it, but 
you know, it's going to take a lot to get there. And I don't think 10, 13 hours of a show is enough to warrant those feelings of forgiveness. And, you know, um, Mm -hmm. the main focus of three was Bryce. This is, he's legit a Brock Turner analog. And we're not supposed to, we shouldn't ever feel bad for him. Fuck that. Fuck all of that. Yes. The only thing that I will say about that and that how that made me feel is I want to see the actor now do something. Oh, yeah. The actor is the actor is phenomenal, but I want to see him do something where he's not a complete yeah, because he's a he, monster, but yeah, because he's a he's a real sweetheart in real life. Like you know, from what I've seen in interviews and all that other stuff, he honestly um, reminds me a lot of Chris Brad. Yeah, for real. Um, he seems like a really good guy, but oh my god, like that character does not deserve forgiveness, and they kept trying to make him sympathetic because, like you know, one of the big themes of the show, like I said, is that you know everybody goes through shit. Everybody deserves a chance to be saved but like look when you cross a certain line i'm not saying you don't just dis- um, you should uh, people shouldn't try to help but once you cross a certain line it's going to be much harder to help you and much harder to sympathize with you and sometimes you don't especially you don't deserve that from certain people who you've wronged and i mean like you know um towards the end of the season one of the characters even says you know people do bad shit uh, but you can still love them. And I think, you know, I definitely agree with that. You know, even the people who have done horrible shit, they have families. They have people that love them even though they've done bad shit. But that doesn't excuse the bad shit. you got to remember what they did and understand that that's not something that people can just be like, yeah, I, I understand that, uh, you know, he was good to you. But look at what he did to, you know, insert character here. And, like, it's just... That pissed, that whole situation pissed me off in three, and Bryce is not a yeah. character that deserved forgiveness. I I think they somewhat convinced me about like his, his right hand man, but Bryce and really I a don't I, w- I wasn't convinced at all for him either. Uh, but we can talk about that when we get to four. A little, um, but um, because. But in that way that they said that you can you can forgive someone without them being a good person. Oh yeah. No, I, I definitely but, understand that. But but yeah, um Like that whole that whole season was are... frustrating and it and it felt like they kinda dropped the ball on like what made Thirteen Reasons Why great with three because yeah. they were trying so hard to like essentially and I mean, I don't entirely agree with this rhetoric, but I do understand why people feel like they were just trying to redeem a rapist. Um, because, like, I don't want to sympathize with him. He was evil. Like, what he did was wrong, and he knew it was wrong. That's the worst part. And also, um, this doesn't spoil anything, but you see that in his moments where he's just, like, pure it- thinking he reverts back to that monster yep exactly um and and that's why i didn't like three and why i didn't like three at all and why i had a particularly bad taste in my mouth for the character of ani um yeah because ani was a new character introduced to kind of introduce like an outsider perspective on this whole situation uh, which i get um, but also, she was used as a plot device to humanize Bryce, and I was not here for it. Um, yeah, also, uh, she was meant to be a new love interest for Clay. Yeah, I, Clay Clay kind of reminds me of Kara, in a sense, because, like, love interests don't work out for him. Like, Kara from Supergirl? Kinda, kinda, but we'll get to that, um... I will say that Clay, that uh, b- 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 Ani, Ani has some moments in four, but in three, oh, yeah, yeah, Ani, I, I just I, Ani, I don't like at all in three, but four, like you know, I don't necessarily like her, but I dislike her a lot less. There is a character that I hate 
in four that I think is entirely useless um, and pointless, especially once you get to the end. Um, mm-hmm. And I will, I will rant about that character when we get to four, because, oh boy. And also, uh, there was talk of, like, redemption and all that. I will say that there is one character that they, uh, that they did with the redemption that I think actually worked. <laughs> and it was handled very, very four. well. Yeah, it was handled very, very well uh, with that particular character, especially because, like, um, especially at the end of, uh, what do you call it, at the end of two? Yeah, at the end of two, you were very scared for this particular character. But through three, and, like, it, you know, closed out and uh, improved itself in four, uh, that character was fully, like, you know, turned around. Yes, but also... Also, there was a new character that was introduced in 4 that I think got redemption by the end. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that. Nah, we'll get to that right about now, uh, since we talked about our just kind of overall thoughts. Uh, so, if you have not seen 13 Reasons Why Season 4 and you are not okay with spoilers, we understand. But this is uh, where you should make your exit, uh, because we are going to be talking about spoilers. See you later. Rah, rah, rah. Spoiler All alert. Right. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so first off, let, let me start. Let me start with. Let me start with the rant. Let me start with the rant. I'm gonna get this out of my system. Fuck Winston. Yes. Fuck Winston. His entire character was fucking pointless. Mm-hmm. His entire character was fucking pointless. He was like Ani, but worse. Ani got to know Bryce at least over the period of like a year. Um, Monty and Monty and Vince and Winston met twice, and one of those two times he beat the shit out of him in front of people. And I get the whole thing of like saying a love at first sight thing, but he said he fell in love with him, and it gets worse because like he then says he fell in love with Alex, who he knew for a week. Like, fam, what? Jeez, they talk about Clay falling too hard in love with people. That's what I'm saying. Winston, Winston. he knew Alex for like a week, and he was like, Dude, you were the only boy I ever truly loved. Like, what? Bitch. I, I loved him, but I also loved you. Bitch, how do you love Monty? And how do you, I mean, like, Alex, I can kind of understand more because you had, like, you know, really sweet moments. But, like, bro, you knew him for, like, a week. Yeah. Come on, now. Like, look, I know high school relationships are fleeting, but I don't even remember, I don't remember any of my friends or anyone that I knew in high school dropping the L word like that. It happens, but yeah, not no. that quick. But for real, <laughs> like you just showed up and had a moment. It's like, I love you. It's like, what? Um, yeah, and you wonder why he doesn't want to talk to you? Like, <laughs> Which I love that, though, because uh, he says it to Alex, but Alex doesn't say it back. Yep. And I love, I love that. Yep. No, you know, you know, uh, like, well, th- this wasn't in high school, but in like in college, when that shit, ha- when that kind of shit happened, you know, uh, you know, what my response was what? whenever, like, whenever somebody said that to me, and like I knew I couldn't, uh, I knew I didn't feel the same, and so I couldn't really say it back. They'd be like, "I love you," and you know, what my response was, "Me too," because I love me too. <laughs> But yeah, the, the pro tip. <laughs> pro tip: <laughs> if you're ever in that awkward situation, like that's the safe answer because that's just like they won't even really think about it. Like it'll go over their head <laughs> until they sit there and think, and they're like, "Wait a minute, he just said me too," as in he loves himself too. <laughs> what a jackass! Um, <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So and like so. By the end of it, right, so Winston is supposed to be, like, this looming threat of, oh, shit, he's going to expose, he's going to expose the gang about what happened with Bryce, with, you know, um, you know, Alex and Jessica. I didn't even get Uh, his obsession with Bryce. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. 
again, like, Monty, he only met twice, and Bryce, he only met once, and Bryce was a total fucking dick to him. No, all, all his interaction was with Bryce was, I'm sorry, dude, here's $2,000 to forget everything. Yeah, I'm sorry my friend beat the shit out of you. Here's two hundred. Here's two thousand dollars. And, and do yeah. you remember what his response was? What? It, he said. He said. Uh, here's two thousand. I'll give you three tomorrow to forget about this. And Winston's response was, "Give me five tomorrow, and you've got a deal." Wow, Winston, you're a piece of shit. I remember this because I just watched three recently. You're like a piece I was so hard shit. watching it that I started watching it during my breaks at like work. Yo, he's a piece of shit. And then like by the end, like you know, he when Alex is just like, you know what, fuck it, I did it. You want to fucking rant with Jessica? If you like me so much, here's your information. You want? I did it. Do with it what you want. Fuck it, now fuck off. And then he goes, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> fuck you, Winston. No one cares. <laughs> what was the point of your character? Not much. And, I, literally... and I feel bad for poor Tyler. Because right. Tyler was like, Hey, cool. Someone else who's into photography like me. Yeah, he goes, I, yeah, he goes, I finally have a friend to talk about my hobby with because none of my friends, none of my other friends really get it. This is awesome. And then you find out, like, this asshole. Mm-hmm. And, and then he tries, like, Winston is, he thinks he's so fucking slick. And he's like, you know, I, um, I have this information on your friends, you know, uh, I, you know, but I'm cool with you. I don't have to include you if you just tell me. And it's like, and he's like, no, fuck you. If you're doing this to my friends, you're doing this to me too. Fuck mm-hmm. off. Like, good for you, Tyler. Um, man. Okay, so yeah. So now that I'm done ranting about Winston, you have any other like hate train shit to talk about with Winston? Because. Like, also, Winston encouraged Diego and made Diego do d- the dumb shit Diego was yeah. doing. So I don't, because I, so I, I said fuck Diego a lot, but obviously Winston was encouraging it, so I can't 100% say uh, fuck Diego. Diego is the character that I thought they redeemed by the end. I mean, mostly. Mostly. Well, he yeah. apologized and. Yeah. And explained why he did it and that he'd never do it again. And had a sweet moment with Jess at the end where it's like, I know now is too soon, but Yeah, I mean I mean he he was a good he was a good kid. And I felt bad for what happened to him at the school in particular. We'll get yeah, to that. that oh too. boy, we'll, we'll get we'll get to we'll that. Get but to yeah, that. um Winston just it felt like a lot of times he was just there, and there were he was there just there. Times, he was just there to cause. There were times where for no reason would openly say, "Why is he here?" And I'm like, "Fuck if I know." I'm thinking the same thing, <laughs> right? right? It's just like I have no fucking, idea. I have no fucking idea why he's here. Like no, and I remember I was watching, I was watching, and I was on the finale, and I was like, "Oh, thank God, Winston hasn't been here the whole time." And then he just walks through the door. And I'm like, "Oh, fucking course, he's like Beetlejuice. He's like fucking Beetlejuice." Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, I hate this. Kid. Oh, and uh, speaking about characters that we kind of hate, um, I think we should just briefly mention this. It's kind of a little bit of an elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. A character who I hated, and uh, I think you'd hate it too, and uh, he never showed up in the final season. Marcus. Oh, yeah, that's because he graduated. I, I, um, I mean, we got to see, we got to even see uh, Ryan and Courtney who graduated the same year. But I guess, because also Marcus's actor is uh, on Council of Dads. He's the um, the main. He's the oldest daughter's love interest on there. Really? Um, okay. Uh, that that's yeah. also why uh, why uh, if you know her, uh, Sin from Arrow. 
why she was in three and not in four is because she was on that show Deputy. She was a lead in that. Huh. But yeah, no, that that's yeah. He's a he's a lead. He's uh he's the um he's the I guess she would be considered the main lead because like she's the eldest daughter. She's the kind of the f- a POV character. Nice. Um, he he's her uh, he's her um husband because they get married at the end of the first episode uh, at the end of the pilot. Um, so is he a good guy? Oh yeah, he's a really sweet dude. Um, and he's an artist too. So that's that's dope. Um, <laughs> that is so. Like anti Marcus. It, it 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 was it was super Good bizarre. I watched the artist. pilot. Yeah, it was super bizarre. I watched the pilot. I thought it was okay, but I don't know if I'm gonna go back to watching it. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was it was really bizarre. But yeah, that, that's why we didn't see him. Uh, just for clarification, yeah, I hated him too. Uh, in the show. Um, but now let's kind of let's kind of like go in, uh, like descending order of hatred. Let's talk about Ani a little bit. Um, you know. Ani was more tolerable this season. I mean, we didn't see her as often, so that might have helped. Yeah, there was like um, a legit time where it's like, oh, I've got to go here and help my mom. Boom, I'm gone for like four out of ten episodes. Yep, yep. So it was. Just, so it helped that she was here in spurts. And I'm not look. I'm not hating on the actress. The actress did a great job, but the character, yeah. the character when she was used for in three, uh, really left a bad taste yes. in my mouth. So like. Because um, I, I, I just want to say this real quick. What the mm-hmm. fuck was that ending of three? Yeah, I, man. This is complete spoiler. Uh, so, yeah, they legit framed a dude for murder. Yeah, and then, you know, I mean, not that I feel, I mean, no one deserves to die, but also they framed a dude for murder and then he ends up getting killed in jail because he was a child molester. Which you know, realistic. Um, um, but like, you know, I was just like, wow, uh, that was a hard left. That was definitely another problem I had with three. They were trying to be too edgy, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's not that's not really what this show's about, man. Um, but yeah, no, I I really liked Ani's friendship with Jessica. I I thought it was really good, and I liked how she was like Jessica's right hand uh, woman. And really supporting her all throughout. I thought her little prom proposal was adorable. It, um, it was. And also, uh, I don't know why it happened, but when she got real, real in the college interview. Yeah. Uh, because I guess because they were all kind of buckling under pressure, so they all ended up getting real, real in their college interviews. But, and. She was just like, I'm always who other people want me to be, and I don't know who I am. Yeah, no, I, 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 that that really showed like the actress's chops. For I was real. like, I was like, whoa, De- that odd awesome moment. Definitely, yeah, definitely a great scene. Uh, it definitely from her. kicks because um, she constantly lied last season. That's what I'm saying. All the time, like we didn't know who she was at all, and like we were just expected to like her. And I'm just and like, you know what no, the funniest thing? You have plenty of what? My favorite part about her was not in four at all. I don't think, and that was her mom. I honestly did not like her mom all that much. She was kind of just the immigrant st- immigrant parent what? stereotype. Uh, I did like the how uh, she was just like, yeah, I know, and uh, kind of shit talker and sometimes. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you because I really just did not like the like the immigrant stereotype thing. I was kind of glad that her mom wasn't involved because like, yo, when she showed up and was like eight o'clock curfew for an eighteen year old, I was like, I. Right. You 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 tripping tripping, but but uh, but yeah, I will say that uh, yeah, she was kind of a bit of a stereotype, but also um, her absence meant something else, and that was we got to see more of the colonel. Yeah, which I thought was cool. I also liked that the parents were more involved uh, in four. I think that was definitely yes, a plus. Yes, especially um, Clay's parents because 
Yeah, the Jensen's. I really like then, the Jensen's. Although I do have, I do have a slight problem with the Jensen's that I want to talk about when we get to the next character. I want to talk three, about though. They kind um, of just like disappeared. Yeah, they just kind of yeah. were there. Um, two, two. Clay's mom was big involved because she was mm-hmm. a lawyer involved in the case. But yeah, three. They kind of just disappeared. All right. So moving on to the next character, I want to talk about. And again, I know I said we're going in like descending order of hate. And I'm not saying I hate this character. Honestly, I really like this character. But I had a few problems um, in 4 compared to the other seasons. Um, and we're talking about my boy Tony. All right. So this is the, 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 this is the thing I wanted to bring up about the Jensen's. All right, Jensen's. Here's my thing. Y'all got this big-ass guest house where Clay and Justin are living at. And yet, Tony who apparently has been Clay's best friend since childhood, has his entire family deported. Entire family deported. And instead of, you know, inviting him to live in that big-ass guest house with your other sons, you let him live with this grown-ass man? I'm sorry, what? That was a little weird. More than a little weird, Brian! Tony is 18, Caleb is mid-twenties minimum, and also, every time Caleb was there, he brought up how young Tony was. It Wait, was wasn't Caleb with Ryan? No, Caleb was with Tony! No, I meant, like, to begin with. No, Caleb was with Tony. I thought he was with Ryan first. No, he was not with Ryan first. He was with, no, he... Like, he was talking to Ryan, but they never dated. He dated Tony at age 17. I want to also Which, bring that up. Too. I hate to say this, but that kind of also brings up another, like, some semi, two other semi-iffy things. But we'll talk about that later. But, like, that, that, is my, that's my, that was my big problem. I was like, yo, this is weird. Also, like I said, Caleb kept bringing up how young Tony is. Every and, time he showed up, it's like you're act you're acting like a child. You gotta go to school and do this and that. He was acting like his legal guardian, which and, he kind of and was. He, and that, that, he interrupted you're dating Tony's this, you're dating job this boy. at the garage to ask him to prom. Yeah, you're dating this boy, this child. I I I am I am twenty six years old. Do you know how weird it would be for me to date? An 18-year-old? My brother, my youngest brother is 18. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. <clears throat> like, what are you doing? I know Tony's actor is actually, like, in his 30s, or close to his 30s, so he looks hella old. But also, like, in show, this kid is 18. Yeah, that that is kind of a little weird. Um, uh. It's more than that. It's more than kind of, but yeah, we're we'll, we'll moving past that. that. I, I, I always have... about him was uh, what was up with the hair? I liked I, it. I liked, um, I liked it. I I, 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 I liked I, Alex's hair from um, from one day at a time. One day at a time. Just, it looked a little weird. I don't know. I dug, I dug it. I, I thought it fit for so. him. Um, but uh. But, uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, um, I also didn't, you know, Tony and Clay kept mentioning that they were best friends, but they barely Which, hung uh, out. To be fair, um, to be fair, at the and, funeral, they pointed that out, and they were like, jeez, man. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm glad they addressed it, but, like, it, it just it bothered me that they mentioned, that, like, that they kept saying they were best friends, and, like, they barely even talked to each other. You know, I have I have several best friends that, like, live out of state. <laughs> and I talk to them every day on on Discord or Facebook yes. or text messages. Like, you can't call somebody your best friend and, like, not talk to them. And I'm not saying you got to talk or, like, blow up their fucking phone or whatever. But, like, my fr- uh, like my best friend that I've known ever since kindergarten, like, lives all the way in fucking Texas. And I talk to him at least once a day. Like... Come on now, like, don't don't be trying to pull the best friend card on me, fam. Um, but yeah, okay. So, but, but yeah, on Tony, from Tony. Tony was uh, cool. Um, I will say that uh, his stuff, like, 
he was a little too stubborn in my opinion. Yeah, he was he was an yeah. asshole. <laughs> he was kind of an asshole. What? Like, Kenny Love was bringing up some legitimate concerns. Like, bro, this man has some white power tattoos and shit. He's like, nah, I'm gonna still fight him. Like, yeah, you won, but dude, she's gonna actually kill uh, you. He, he brought up, yo, this dude is offering you. Giving you a full a ass ride. ride. Like, full ride on a boxing scholarship. Fam. If you don't carry your brown ass to college. <laughs> but yeah. Like d- do you, d- my 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 mama would have beat my ass if uh if I had gotten a full ride to a, um, an expensive school and I said no. She would have beat she would have beat the brown off of people, me. Parents would be pissed if they were offered a free Right. I see, and I see, and I love that his dad called him out on that bullshit. He said, "Don't fuck up my dream." Tell you are my dream, not not the garage. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Also, I I'm also really glad that they didn't bring up Tony's family situation all that often because honestly, like that part from three, or it was also in two. But it was Three mostly focused on the big three. Stuff that happens. part from yeah, that part from three really just felt like it was tacked on to, to feel politically relevant, especially considering like right before this season like started filming was when like all the the DACA incidents were happening. Mm-hmm. Like, right before 3 was uh, started filming was when all the DACA stuff started happening. So, like, it just felt like that was added on. And it didn't feel like it flowed correctly. And, and, so I'm glad they didn't the overdo that, that part. Was, Bryce's lawyer. I felt like they did that as a way to, to, again, to try to redeem Bryce. And so... Mm-hmm. Because the lawyer did it and he didn't do it and... He was sorry about it, and he bought the car, which I'm glad he got the car back. Yep. But yeah, no, like I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that like it worked, it worked out in the end for Tony. But man, he was a he was a stubborn asshole this season. I'm not gonna lie, I, I still love the dude, but like Jesus, especially like I felt so bad for Tyler all throughout this season. Tony was giving yeah. him so much shit. Like this poor I could kid. tell from the. Like very beginning about what was going on with Tyler, yet his own friend was like, "Nah, he's there's no other explanation. He's just gone crazy. He's he's still iffy. Oh, he's probably going to shoot up the school, guys. We got we got to tell somebody now. Like, oh my God, Tony, come on, man. Have Which I like that Tyler called him out for that. Uh, but- Oh, yeah, for real, for real. All right, so transitioning into that, let's talk about Tyler. Talk about the biggest, like, glow-up of this entire oh, show. Oh, yeah, because you look back at season one? He was this creepy, weirdo, just, ew character who was peeping on Hannah in the first season. And then he, like, becomes this stereotypical depressed white kid school shooter which um or he you know he he has a bit of a punk anarchist phase which leads him into becoming the which uh, i will know, say that one depressed of the white kid school that shooter I, that i loved about about this show and for particularly cuz they highlighted it more the punk who can hack the Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Tyler's friends that the, like were a big part of three, but kind of disappeared into the background of four. Like they were there, but like they were never a main part of the cast. Yeah, but ever. um, they were cool, and I really liked them. And uh, yeah, how they were like helping Clay through through four. Like they helped him sometimes. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um. But yeah, I I really loved Tyler's like they even, uh, development. They even legit, he, you're was, like, 
you're like, this boy has some school shooter tendencies. And then, in three, well, technically two, at the end of two, and three deals with the ramifications. Yeah. Yeah, two, he straight up is about to go <laughs> shoot up the dance. And, like, on, so I, and I had a big problem with this when it happened. We talked about it, uh, like, uh, in our season two episode. I think it was super unrealistic that, like, Clay literally just kind of stood up to him and he didn't shoot him. Like, I understand, like, you know, you don't want to, like, have that, like, you know, negative. You want to prove something because this is media. But also, like, you shouldn't you encourage people to be like, yeah, just talk to the shooter, y'all. But also... Tyler's feel like talking with us, but not for. Oh yeah, it, it de- definitely worked. That's what I'm saying. Yes. but that's what I'm saying though, right? Like Tyler's case, it definitely worked out because that's all Tyler really needed was somebody to listen to. But you know, there are cases where these people who have this mindset are just so set in their ways, like just trying to get in their way will just get you killed, and that sends kind of the wrong message to people, right? Like. And, well, I, feel like, is and I feel like Four um, tried to kind of give that message, but failed. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, it fell kind but, of flat. But there. yeah, Tyler um, in general, um, he was honestly the best part of the best part of three. Yeah, he was the best part of three because, like. His slow growth in three really got me invested in him uh, to the point where in four, I was always yeah. looking forward to seeing what Tyler was doing. And I felt so bad for Tyler every time Tyler was shit on by the other characters. Like, yo, leave yeah, him Yeah, and I do like, I think it's kind of a little bit weird who it is, but I am glad that they gave him, like, a happy ending love interest. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a little kind of shaky, just a little shaky. Like, ooh, I don't know if that's well, appropriate. It's Monty's but... sister? Yeah, Monty's little sister. I don't know if that's appropriate, considering Monty raped him, but... Also, also, right. uh, this is still, one of the other still... iffy things that you get into, is uh, he's now going to be 18 in college. And they're still continuing the relationship. I mean, I, I, I know I know of several people who have done that and it's worked out for. So no, it's like not, it's but... not it's not that bad. She's only like a year I think she's only like a year younger than them, maybe two. True. So not it's not too bad. Um but like it's not like I had a big I had a problem with Caleb and Tony because Caleb is like he's a grown ass man with a whole ass business like he well, has also, to be in his like mid twenties. Well, also you know something else that makes it a little bit weird and a little bit honk, a little bit out there. He doesn't just own a business; he what? owns the business right next door to the garage. Yeah, so. Just nah, fam. That that did not fly with me. That did not fly with me. Um, but yeah, no. Tyler, 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 Tyler was, great. was um, awesome. Tyler was absolutely. And uh, he had a lot of great moments. I I, uh, I again, I just felt so bad when every character was giving him shit. Like you know, when Clay was having his big freak out, uh, and he was like, "Tyler, what did you do?" And poor Tyler, he, he was, was like, he was I didn't even do covered in the in the like. Little stress. Yeah, uh, yeah, the little stress poncho thingy, the yellow stress poncho, and, you, and then there's like Clay's freaking out, like Tyler, what did you do? And it's just like I didn't do anything, man. What are you talking? About? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, You're and the when they like crazy. first start suspecting him, he goes there and he's like, "Now I'm gonna go to my job, which I'm gonna be at for five hours." In yeah. case you need to know where the fuck I am, uh, because um, like Jesus, like what? Why? Are, like I appreciate them worrying about him because they want to make sure he's okay. But like Jesus Christ, I don't know about you, but at least to me, it was pretty damn obvious that he was being a police informant. 
That's what I'm saying. Like, did y'all really think he was going to no, flip on you? He, he cares gonna, about you guys way too much. They to... thought he was going to flip out again. They no, they th- no, they thought he was gonna. F- he thought they thought he was gonna flip on, uh, flip on them about like the price thing. He they was, like, also they thought, were like, Why they also thought that the he cops? was just Tony in particular. Thought that he was. Yeah, yeah thought he was. It was just buying guns shooting. again. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know that. But like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which come on, Tony, but, come on, man. You spend more time with him than Clay does. Like, for mm-hmm. real, dude. Which, Why? I did like how um, Alex was like. Why are you guys questioning him? I love that Alex stood by Tyler. Like their friendship was always great I will, to me. I will say um, that Alex is so, definitely a big focal point of this season. Alex was a big improvement. So I, I'm, I, you know, um, I didn't no. like Alex that much in the first season. He was kind of a dick. He was a dickhead. That definitely. Um, um, I'm gonna be honest with you in the first. Was not great with the blood. <laughs> yeah, in the first season, he was a dickhead. Um, and then the second season, I felt bad for him. But he was also still kind of a dickhead. Um, and then in the third season, like, more dickheadery happens. Like, but his friendship with Zach all throughout. That was like, mostly kind of in two, but yeah, it was touched um, on in three and, like, crescendoed in four. Mm-hmm. Yep, um, but four it really kind of improved his character. He was really figuring himself out, and also kudos to for featuring a bisexual dude, because like you know, there's so many bisexual girls on TV. Well, uh, bisexual dudes well, don't get you know what's nearly as represented that I realized. They openly said that that what? Charlie, Charlie was bisexual, but Alex, Alex never put a yep. label on it. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. I think he. He's yeah, I think he just said he. Out, I just think he said he. You know, he was dating Charlie. Charlie. He never... Charlie, yeah. Mm-hmm. Although, although, like, not to be that guy to like correct people's labels. Yeah. But the way Charlie it... described how he was, how he felt. Yes. It, it, it sounded more like pansexual than bisexual because, at least from what I've heard from other pansexual people, pansexual people describe being pansexual as. Loving people yes. for people, not just specifically yes, because of their gender. Yes, bisexual is just liking two genders. Doesn't have to be male and female. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because also pan includes, like, if you're into non-binary people as well. Uh, this is just all stuff I've picked up from, and, like, uh, like talking watching. to people that I know who are also uh, pansexual. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, but yeah, so I really enjoyed that. I really... Charlie, Charlie is probably mm-hmm. my favorite new character introduced on the series. Mm-hmm. He is the MVP. I love I, that kid. I, 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 I love that like kid so much. He was meant to be kind of like a, a, a version of season one Clay, just to see how much Clay has changed. Yeah, I also feel like he's a, yeah, like a it. what if Monty was a good person? Because he was the freaking quarterback. That's what I'm saying. And that's what I hate about, like, I mean, I mean, it's not just 13 Reasons Why, but that's what I hate about teen shows in general. They continue this weird, like, archaic, like, pop culture, um, high school social hierarchy of, like, jocks don't hang out with nerds and so on and so forth. Let me tell you, I am one of the biggest nerds on the fucking planet, and I had so many friends oh, that were on the football team. I've said this um, before. Or I think even on the podcast, and I will say it again. Uh, back in my high school days, there were there were at least I think one, if not more, years where most, if not our entire base section for choir was the football team. Yeah, no. So I I just never I never liked that stereotype. Uh, but yeah, I I really loved Charlie. I loved his. Mm-hmm. Like obsession with cookies and also the special cookies. I really appreciated those. I was like, "Yeah, Charlie, that's right." But I just like that's it where right. he all about the cookies, <laughs> and then Alex comes and Alex is like, "Really, you bring cookies to a house party?" And he's like, 
And he goes, these are special cookies. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, buddy. All right. And I, I love it because Alex eats one. And he goes, I don't feel anything. You, uh, I think I need another one. I was like, and then no, 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 later no, no, we no, no, jump no, no. Give and we minute. find out that he Give did eat the second and... one. And now he's just completely messed up. Yep, he's uh, like, I told you. Bro. Bro, let me tell you. Let me tell you. There, I, there's a whole story with a, involving a Rice Krispie treat. Oh, I man. Think, man. Yeah. Um, those were times. I think it was... Uh, um, I, those were times. But, yeah. Was Josh Wolf, a stand-up comedian, who tells about the story that uh, he ate an entire um, blueberry muffin when... When I don't know if oh, you guys man. know this about muffins, uh, but, but you're only supposed to eat like a fourth of it. Yeah, I, I like I had like a whole big ass corner piece of this rice krispie treat. Let me tell you, when it kicked, I like I was staring at my Chick Fil A sandwich like I was looking for the meaning of the universe. Like <laughs> my. My brother, like, my brother was laughing at me so hard because he was like, dude, you were, like, moving in slow but motion. But anyway, uh... Um, but yeah, no, no, no. So, so yeah, I really love Charlie. I, mm-hmm. Charlie is just so freaking adorable. His, his prompt, his prompt proposal was the his cutest thing ever. Rules. Oh, my God. Because Alex... That, that was the cutest thing ever. Alex, oh, my... of course, was like, nah. Because he's, you yeah, know, stereotypical but, but emo that kid. That was the cool thing, um, was Charlie kept pushing Alex. Yeah. And it was, and, I and it. one of and the, I, the I, first I, cute I, moments I, with them was the fact that uh, Al- during the school shooting, Alex was having an episode. And and Charlie yeah, he had a panic tossed attack, him and through then, um, it. And he was like, how did you know how to do that? And he's like, when you told me you had it, I googled it to see how to... Yeah, how to help. Yeah, I thought that was really sweet. Also, one of my, one of my favorite things uh, with Charlie um, mm-hmm. was uh, when he came out to his dad. And uh, like his dad was like, yeah, no, I, I, I had a feeling you were figuring yourself out. I mean, I remember... Um, your like unhealthy obsession in middle school with uh, Eli um, Eli Manning. And he goes, Eli Manning was an amazing quarterback, and they start talking shit about Eli Manning. Which, as a Giants fan, like I I talked a lot of shit about Eli Manning. Um, and then he goes, you also had Eli uh, Eli Manning uh, wallpaper on your uh, phone as a as a kid in middle school. He goes, he was a very he was a really good quarterback. He goes, yes he was, but he was also shirtless. He's very handsome. Yes, yes he is. that he was very good. Handsome. And I also like. <laughs> Like when you talk about oh. coming out, Alex, because he he was he was just yeah like, he was like this? yeah I his his brother his brother's uh, his brother's reaction was my favorite. He goes, "Dude, you're yeah, getting the fucking he, quarterback." Like, Sweet. This is, he's also my boyfriend, and the parents are just like, "You want a steak?" All right. I I, I love. Yeah, no, and the brother's just like, you're dating the quarterback? Oh, that's fucking awesome. Let's talk about some plays, man. So here's what and you, you need to do. And you also talk about I, characters. I love that. That was great. I, I, honestly, I honestly forgot. Yeah, I honestly forgot he had a brother until Brian mentioned it I was in text. I was like, oh, yeah, he does have a brother. On things. And they showed Alex and his family. And it's just like they show his brother. And I'm like, he had a brother? And I texted that to Jay, and Jay's like, he got it? <laughs> I was so confused. I was like, what do you mean? I don't see anyone else but in his house except for him and his parents. Real quick, <clears throat> season four definitely gets the spotlight, but... Yeah, Jeffy Sandal was really, Lisa really good in this season. Supernatural. Yeah, he's such a sweet he dad in this. It he's feels so weird. Such a sweet dad who's very nice and like goes to the ends for his son and and his son's friends. Like not even just his son, all that whole group, man. Like 
It was really nice. Uh, nice change of pace. Also, like shout out to shout out to um, not Zach's mom. Uh, shout out to Alex's mom. She was really good too. Yeah, like, I, in the couple, in the few scenes that we I, got from her, and I wish I like we had gotten more that, screen, uh, screen time. She was like this. Alex was like, I thought this would be a bigger deal. And she's like, do you like, does he make you happy? Does he make you happy? Is he a good, is he, is he good to you? And it's like, yeah, um, he really is. He goes, yeah. And it's a big deal to me. And I was like, oh, um, um, all right. So let's talk. So uh, uh, just, before uh, we jump into the main, if mains, you don't mind real quick, let's talk about, I uh, just side note, since we talked about deputy mm-hmm. standoff, talk real quick about the sheriff. Okay, cool, cool. I really like the sheriff, especially the sheriff's relationship with Clay. I hated him in three. Um, but as, well, yeah, he was he was definitely a dickhead in three. Then we find out that it it was just he genuinely thought Clay killed him, and he was just doing his yep. job. And he found out that Clay didn't. And also, like, I really appreciate that, like, um. You know, especially in today's climate with what's going on, they really do demonstrate that, like, you know, yeah. he's a good cop. You know, like, good. I, I really Which appreciate I don't like, know. the focus on that. I don't um, even touch about my times, but yeah, it's like that they said that he was a good cop, and that, and that by the end, we find out that all of his actions in season four are just because he genuinely. He's worried about, yeah, he's generally worried about Clay in particular. Because he well, sees also, that, like, Clay I mean, is coming I think he undone. also kind of figures out that uh, him going after Clay so hard and being a killer and him not being a killer could mess with a kid. Yep. Um, all right, so now, before we jump into the mains, like the main three, really, I want to talk about my favorite character of this entire show. Oh. Zach motherfucking Dempsey. My man. This guy is my favorite character of the entire show. Love this guy. He was in a bad place this season, but I am so happy for him. He got out of there. Um, I, I loved his friendship with Alex. One of the funny things, so I was watching, um, I was on the phone with Elizabeth while watching the first episode. And uh, th- uh, there's the part in the first episode where they're walking on the rooftop and, like, um, you know, Alex almost falls off and then, um, you know, Z- Zach catches him. And, like, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a moment where, like, he's holding his hand and, like, they're looking each other in the eye. And I made a joke and I was like, huh, gay? And, like, literally two seconds later, Alex kisses Zach and I was like, okay, well, I see that I mean, coming. All right. The show kind of a little bit like, hinted at that earlier because, remember, when Alex was going through therapy and... Oh, with the, with the, with the boner, yeah, yeah. I, he couldn't I, yeah, get I it up with girls thing. at that time, mm-hmm. but he couldn't get it up, period, and uh, it was yep. his interactions with Zach that kind of... But, but he's... They also said yeah. that he generally loved um, Jessica, so I think he's at least bi. Yeah, yeah he's definitely bi, if not pan. Um, but, but yeah, for sure. Uh, I, mm-hmm. But I, I really love Zach, man. And Z- Zach has been through so much. This poor kid. He's such a good guy. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean... He's just uh, had so much trouble. He like, falls for a girl that he's not really supposed to. They have the secret affair. She she ends up killing herself, and he kind of takes responsibility. He really takes it on his shoulders. Yeah, like, to very the fact where to we play. find out that um, like he was the one doing all the Polaroid shit in season two. Yep, and then like with the um, like then he ends up like dating this one girl that like Bryce uh, ended up yes. being pregnant. Um, um, and then they have a little friends with benefits uh, thing going on for a while, and then well, did they eventually she gets a boyfriend, and he's just like, because, "Well, shit." Because because um, 
Because yeah. uh, no, they, they, when they, they, he was beating up Bryce, Bryce was like, you never actually slept with her, did you? And he's like, at least I did that. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I don't think they did actually do anything. Um, but yeah, I think I, yeah, yeah, I think it was when he kissed her was the first time they ever yeah. did anything. Yeah, it, but mm-hmm. she gets reject if she rejects it. Yeah, you're right. Also, also, meanwhile, Which I was like, oh man. Also, also, that was a bit yeah. of a dick move on her part. Like, where she was like, where, 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 like, not only does she like reject him and say like, I have a boyfriend. She goes, oh, by the way, he's outside. Well, then also really to like immediately him. say, like, can we meet tomorrow right... after school? Yeah, like, dude, this is not the right time. Read the room. Yeah. Like, read the at room. Least, at least with like Supergirl, like, when uh, when when confessed his feelings and she didn't feel the same way. They gave it a few episodes. But but mm-hmm. but but yeah, but and then I just three, felt, I just felt bad, so bad. Another for reason Zach. why three I don't really like is another moment that pisses me off that goes to show you just how much of a POS Brock is. Now Bryce. I said the real life person. Bryce. Yeah, b- yeah, because because he like because he he ruined Zach's whole career. Like Zach already injured his knee before, and he just got back to like peak condition. And then Bryce legit just purposely and targets tackles him, him and just full strength him up. with helmet on. Like mm-hmm. where he did like a three sixty in the air. Yeah, piece of shit. And talk about like you feeling for Zach, man. That cliffhanger in episode five, Jesus Christ, yeah. man! I was like, no. Just why? Why is it always Zach? From the... This man and can it never was get like, a break. Not only did he get, not only did he get hurt again, this time in his arm. He also got his sweet car wrecked. <laughs> to shit. Exactly. No, and, and then like yo, fucking, fucking Clay. Look, I, I love Clay, but like fucking Clay, his, Zach comes back first day. Welcome back. I'm like, welcome back. Fuck you. And literally, Zach says the exact same thing. And I'm just Especially because like, we Zach. find out that Clay Fuck just him like right now. out of that situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just he just left him for dead. Although, like that's later explained, uh, which actually I don't think it ever properly explained, honestly, because they say what happened, but they don't ever uh, really elaborate. They did. They did. Like I I know of like I mean like I I I. Like I, I know they yeah. like they explain what it is, right? But they never explain like really. They never go into why. I mean, they say surface level stuff, but like that doesn't. I've read shit on this. That doesn't cover anything. That doesn't give no, you a but solid I do diagnosis. Know of people who what have any like dissociation, and it really messes with you. But yeah, so um. Poor Zach. He was just through the ringer. But I, I do love the coach. The coach yes. is one of those like very underrated like key players this season. Because not only was he like Justin's sponsor and really helped him out and believed in him, but he also believed in Zach. I really, really appreciated that. And like you know, giving Zach that second chance, letting him be a coach at the school and, over the summer at the end. I thought that was really find nice. At the very end. The unexpected twist for Zach. Oh yeah, because like I mean, we knew that he was a musician. I mean, we even saw him playing the piano. And I like, believe that that's one of, the, on the piano, one of the ways that uh, him and Hannah party. connected was over music. Yep, yep. And and we find mm-hmm. out and so, like, that he got a scholarship. Yeah, and he auditioned. Yeah, because he auditioned for a music school, and like he got in. I was like, "Good for you, man!" 
but I, I do love that, like, uh, he's like, yeah, you know, I told my mom it was for, vi- she thinks it's for violin, but actually it's for voice and guitar. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's try to avoid that and, for now. And I love I the, the I, I initially like, wanted to go for school. Yeah, I'm just going to forget those last couple lines. Yeah, man, like, uh, you know, I, I initially wanted to go to school for music, but then, like, there was a whole conversation about, like, how are you going to make money off of it? Ah, five years later, I end up going into content mm-hmm. creation. Funny how life but works. I might have gone um, but yeah. um, to college for music if I had uh, the confidence. But I just, as you know, IRL have... Times were very low self-esteem. Man, uh, if there's something I have, like, I, I do not have in short supply. Which is why we're confidence. good um, pairing. But, uh, but, yeah, no, like, um, back to Zach, though. Um, I, I really do appreciate his character arc. Um, and I, mm-hmm. I love his friendship with Clay. Because they're they so are. similar. Um in terms of characters. So I, I really, I understand why they clash so much because they see in mm-hmm. themselves what they hate about themselves, you know? And I was, people will always ask, why are Clay and Zach always fighting? They're all they're, mm-hmm. they're similar. And I was like, that's exactly why they fight all the time. Which, because which they do, see in each other I what they hate about themselves. The, like, apex and I mean, of Zach, you can see, where mm-hmm. it's just like the prom. <laughs> Uh huh. Oh, he brings a fucking <laughs> No, but but like, yo, oh my god, like, uh, but to a more serious moment, like to reflect kind of that element of Zach's character where he like about his like self hatred that I was talking about with both him and Clay. Like you even see that when Diego is beating the shit out of him, and he sees a reflection of himself, and he's like. Hit and then pussy. also, Hit and then also during the riot, like, he sees that the that the coach wrote yep. a recommendation letter for him, and and crumples mm-hmm. it up. He takes it because he's just like, I cannot yep. live up um, to that. All right, so yeah, but then I also like how even at his like low yep. times, he still so, tried to like boost people up. Like also at the prom where they were all sitting and. They're mellowing, and he's like, fuck that, we're... And he goes on about, like, living and all that. Yep. And, um, I, you know, I, I feel especially bad for him, because two people uh-huh. he considered his brothers died, man. Like, I mean, I know one of them is, like, a real piece of shit, but well, the other one, three like, Three people Jesus. that he kind of considered um, brothers. Oh yeah, Monty too. Yeah, Monty counts too. Yeah, true, um, true. But, Facts. But yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but and just that whole thing with him and the hospital. Yeah. Oh my God, that, that didn't get me to cry. But like, I was, you know, I, I was really feeling that. He goes, you know, like my dad died in this hospital. I watched my dad die here. Um, you know, I, I and, definitely, and that's I, I definitely know what that. I definitely know what that feels like. like. One of the few. Yeah, Char- yes. one of Charlie's one of like, Charlie's best moments. Where we get moments. to see Charlie I being loved, serious. Love that. Oh my god! Yeah, like that was beautiful. That was and then, fucking and then, beautiful. I, I and then love later, that Charlie so much. and Alex teamed up together to get him sober. Yep, and I love that. I, I love that he called. <laughs> uh, they call. Uh, he called yeah. their mothers Teresa. Like that was great. Um. But yeah, so now let's jump into the main characters. So first, let's talk about Jessica. So I kind of have, like, sort of mixed feelings about her. Overall, I enjoyed uh, Jessica, and I I think she's one of the best characters on the show. Um, But there were points where I felt like she went too far and she was too agenda-driven. Definitely, you felt that a lot in Even though I I I really uh, like the actress who plays her, the the character that was played by uh, Beck mm-hmm. Taylor Klaus then from Arrow. Uh, her character, like, really pushed her to do the activist shit and, like, really 
heavily pushed her, and that was not good. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but but I do like that like Jessica was like the voice of the of the youth and the school in that um in that regard. Um, the right episode was mm-hmm. really big for her. Um, and, and man, when this when this was happening, like both me and Brian were like, "This is a crazy because coincidence." For oh, those that may not know, TV right shows now. like this they film months in advance. Like, mm-hmm. they. They film, like, months in advance, especially if you need to add, like, effects, which I do imagine that this season there were several effects that needed to be added. Yeah, and, and so it like, takes stunts a and while, whatnot. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that only just started happening earlier this year, so it's just, like, that is a coincidence, but boy, is it a crazy coincidence. Yeah. That was wild. I was like, yo, if 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 this if this had come out uh, like the following year, I would have felt like this was another case of like with three where that shit was tacked on. Um, but like this was Especially just because crazy of the inciting timing. incident. <clears throat> yep, like this is, was the one time I felt bad for Diego. Like, oh shit, and Diego and. And then the the riot happened, and it's just like, what? Yeah, bro, I was like, bro, what is happening right now? Jesus Christ. Oh, man, that whole, yo, that whole episode was just nuts. If they had thrown tear oh, gas, dude. I, I would have just, like, all right, Illuminati confirmed. Right? For real. Like, play the X-Files music, please. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, so that was pretty big for her. Um, I loved her relationship with Justin and her never giving up on Justin and like her goodbye was, oh, that yes, was so it, fucking Yes, sad. it was. But also with her, do you think like her relationship with Diego and how she said that she went into it just to find out what he knew and she was... Mm-hmm. And at one point, it felt like she kind of wanted to date both of them. I mean, no. Okay, so here, here's what I think. I think it was mostly because, like, Justin wasn't giving her physical attention because he knew as an addict, he didn't want to just, like, re- replace his addiction with, you know, and associate that with sex with her because that would have been bad for both of them. So he neglected her physically Diego wanted her physically, and she needed that. I so, get like, you. that's what she got from him. I, I get where you're coming from. But, but yeah, still, she kind of went too far with the activism at times, but I did. I, oh, yeah, I, also I, did I definitely feel do like that. The, her and Clay make a really good team. I I really I love that their friendship was highlighted more and like they became like co leaders together. I really enjoyed yeah, and I lot. love that um, scene where it's like the riot first starts and it's just like, so what do we do next? I don't know. I was following your lead. I was following you. It's like wait, I thought I was following you. And I also I also again I love that they like have really developed a, like a like a legit friendship because like the scene in the prom where like. Alex, Charlie, and Clay walk in, and, like, Jessica's like, oh, you three look so adorable. You guys should, like, form, like, a poly thing. Um, and, and she's like, no, I mean it. You guys all look cute. And, I, you know, and you should know I'm being serious, because I never and say that also, type of shit about Clay. That moment that they shared together at the funeral? Oh, man. Dude, okay, so, um, I guess this will help transition into Justin. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, man. This this season, the, like that part, uh, it hit particularly close to home for me. Uh, like for kind of for two reasons. One, because a close friend, of, like a, a close friend of mine, actually like passed away uh, my senior year of high school, and also this year. I ended up losing um, a, a very close childhood friend of mine. So I was just like, oh my God, this is, uh, why? Why show? 
why you gotta do this to me? Um, but yeah, man, like that shit was heavy. I, I, I definitely, yeah, and, like, I felt that and I, the, I related to it. The, this felt like a very classic 13th Indeed, twice. and uh, especially for me, the uh, Clay Justin thing hit hard, not just because it was really well written and all that. And oh man, the so the, the scene that made me cry with Clay and Justin was yes, the college that, essay. That had oh my so god, hard, and I think part of and I think for me, I, part of the thing that, that I was uh, ugly crying resonates with me is uh, part of. I don't want to get too personal, but for me, definitely, I have not always had the easiest of times, and uh, one of the things that helped me through it was having really good personal friends that felt like brothers, including, I hate to get sappy, but but it's oh, just like thanks, man. helped me get through it, and just like their brotherhood. Yeah, dude, oh my god. Like, the moment when he was like, he's my brother, he was, he's my positive influence, I was like, oh, no! Because yeah, like you said, like you know, I I, I mentioned it before. Like you know, I, I I lost I lost a very close uh childhood friend of mine that I grew up with uh this year, and you know he is somebody I definitely consider a, a brother. And like that shit, oh my god, man, like that really got me. And <laughs> I was not okay. I I, I, I legit and cried. I will cried admit Chick-fil-A there was fries. one like, other time that I just lightly cried, and that was their goodbye scene. Like when they said goodbye mm-hmm. to each other. Oh yeah, in the hospital. Oh yeah. Oh, dude. There was yeah. one other time that, that got me rough. choked up, but um, that was but yeah. specifically with Clay. So. Mm-hmm. So I want to. So I want to just quickly like just give a like a, a nod since we're talking. Since this whole section is about Justin, just that mm-hmm. actor is absolutely phenomenal. I love. That 13 Reasons Why does not do the thing that conventional TV does. Conventional TV, characters will have a drug problem for, like, a season, and then it'll go away. But 13 Reasons Why really shows that, you know, addiction is an ongoing battle that will never go away. But, you know, you can always, if you have a strong support system, you can have people that to keep you in check. And just because you relapse doesn't make you doesn't make the work that you you know, you know have built up any uh, like any less valued. And I I really appreciated how they told Justin's story. And I even appreciated that it wasn't a happy ending because like that again that would kind of go under the glorification category. And like this again, there's no reasons why I always tries to lean towards the realistic. Yeah, and, and I appreciated uh, that. It was really sad and. Uh... Really hadn't gone, but yeah, it was real, and also, especially with Justin, and it was honestly a little bit with Hannah, but there were other things involved too, but one of the big things that led mm-hmm. to his death was just, like, pride and not feeling like he could be loved. Yep. I, I that that, that, def, that definitely hurt because you know especially when you see somebody with so much potential it's just like oh man and see I and just, see the thing with sucks. Justin um, is that uh, maybe it was because he came from a hard time but even more so than Clay Justin really was like there was not that many people that he could not get along with. And uh, yep. this was one of the few good things about season three was when Clay was convinced of murder, everybody, everybody, it seemed like even including his parents, thought thought that he could have done it. Yeah, I thought it was him. Yeah, I thought it might be Justin. him. Except for Justin. 
Yeah, I really appreciated like how solid their friendship was in three and their brotherhood. Like that mm-hmm. was probably the only but redeeming then, part. And of three. then um, um, in four, to see how Clay reacts to him dying and all of that. Yeah, man. And oh, I don't God. know that about was, you, but that was really. I was really not heavy. expecting it to be Justin. At no, one point, me I either. even thought me that it either. might be Alex. Not at all. Um. I thought it was gonna. Be, I thought it was gonna be Zach. I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought they were gonna do me dirty and hurt me real bad and get my boy Zach. There were several points where I was like, "Oh my God, is he gonna beat Zach to death?" Ah, oh, God. But yeah, Justin still hurt. Um, but yeah, now that we have about ten minutes left, uh, let's kind of breeze through Clay. Unfortunately, we can't spend too much time on Clay. But I thought he was fantastic. Uh, the actor is amazing. Uh, shout uh, out Gary to his Sinise. Therapist. His therapist was fantastic. That's the throughout. actor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. He was phenomenal. Uh, I really appreciate it because um, Mr. Moore, mm-hmm. the guidance counselor, pissed me off. So I'm glad they actually got a competent mental And if you know the actor, it's a little <laughs> unexpected, but I still think that he did a really good job and I really liked him and his connection with Clay and how... And how Clay yeah, really like, well done. Really owned up to his shit and changed and all that. Yep. And I also like that Clay mm-hmm. got a happy ending at the end with like you know um, Heidi, little little nerd girl. I was like, oh, that's cute. She even knows his like, comic she, series. Just seeing her whole, like, all know, her mannerisms she, and all she, that, I literally said out loud, "She's perfect for him." Oh. Right? It was just like, oh. And then, like, when he said his email, he felt kind of embarrassed, and he was like, uh, it's, uh, Percy, um, RK, uh, RK, um, M. And she was like, alien killer robots. Nice. I was like, oh, she knows this thing. Because I'm not gonna lie, you guys. Like, I'm, I, sometimes I'm, uh, when I do, like, when I, when I do networking stuff, uh, and I have to give out my email. I feel a little embarrassed sometimes because my email is still like JL Ghoul. And, you know, not many people like, go, I mean, it's Batman related, so it's not as niche. But, like, people are just like, what does that mean? And it's just like, oh, yeah, so it's this. But, yeah, so, like, I, I, I felt for play there. Um, he was great. He was absolutely phenomenal. I, I liked that, like, you know, that they built up this kind of hero complex that Clay had ever since season one, mm-hmm. and this was the natural conclusion. Of it. Little, it just was finally, it was the straw that went broke a little the too weird back. for me, but in the end, I think they did pull it off and, like, reined it yeah. all in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I still don't think they, like, I, at least not to where I'm comfortable, they didn't, like, mm-hmm. explain the disassociation. Um, as much as I would have liked, but I think Indeed. that was a cool twist. Indeed, but um, although, although, other, other than like showing an instance of his disassociative episodes, that camping trip episode was total filler. He, except for that final yeah, scene, kind of was. Um, I can't really explain. Yeah, it kind of was. I did like the funny moments with uh, with his mom and. Got to see the bonding of his mom and Lucifer. Yeah, I thought his mom was great. Um, his dad uh, definitely his shines. Great. His dad is really last fun. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought this uh, this season was really good. Uh, we've got about seven minutes, so uh, final, uh, thoughts, final Brian, thoughts. We're gonna jump to the club. Uh, I plugs. think it was uh, this show has been a roller coaster. And uh, I think it started really good and ended really good. And um, honestly, I can't wait to see where mm-hmm. these actors go next, including Catherine Langford. I'm, I, yeah, I'm very excited for Cursed. I cannot wait for Cursed. Yes. Oh, that's going to be so I'm hyped. excited uh, for all the actors going forward. I kind of now want to see the actor who plays Clay do something action-y. Yeah. I mean, we, we've seen him. He's pretty cut. Like, yeah, he could definitely do it. Um, but, yeah. So, now that we've reached final thoughts, uh, we've reached that special time of the night where we get to talk about what's coming up and <laughs> going on for our, for our individual channels. For me, it's Vlair. And for Brian, it is YouTube and Vlair. 
Uh, links are in the show notes and the description if you're watching this on YouTube. So I really haven't really done to too much. Um, most of my free time has been just marathoning 13 Reasons Why this week. So, uh, and also work has been a little extra intensive this week. So the combination of the two, I really haven't had that much free time. But I hope to maybe do some stuff next week, even though I keep saying that at the end of these shows. But um, this, like, pandemic time has been very weird for us all, especially with me and content creation. Uh, but I am have hope for the future. But that's it for me, honestly. All right. So for me, uh, the Valer uploader is back, so I'm starting to upload again. Uh, I'm going to do Stargirl, um, episode five. Love that show. Uh, Kipo came out this week. Going to review season two. Super excited for that. I, uh, my uh, first season review did really well. Um, and uh, some other stuff. Uh, also, I stream Fate Grand Order on Twitch uh, pretty much every day around like one or two in the afternoon Eastern Standard Time for about an hour, maybe two sometimes. So uh, if you want to just come by and chill, I definitely uh, you can check that out. I would really appreciate it. Kind of diversifying the hustles a little bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, next week we are going to be doing, I believe it is, um, where is my thing? Mm-hmm. I cannot find it. Brian, next you week we Next week we are talking uh, what about is our next week? I have been pressing for a very long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are doing yes. Doom they Patrol next week. finally be watching it. Well, catching up. Wait, uh, see, yeah, because I'm catching up. I'm catching up for season two, which is starting the like the the following week after this. Super excited! I know it's great. I just put it off because I got busy, really busy last summer. Uh, but I'm really excited to talk about it. Uh, we got a full we got a full schedule planned for the rest of June and early July. So look forward to that. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. But until Peace. next time, we'll catch you guys. Later.